Welcome to this short video on Microsoft 365 Lighthouse, uh, recently released in public preview. This is a companion video to the longer uh, MSP dojo on uh, the Altaro site uh, article that uh, we have on Microsoft 365 Lighthouse, its prerequisites, how to enable it, etc. So in this video, we're going to step through those things and I'm going to demonstrate them in the UI, how you do them. So the steps involved in getting Lighthouse working is as follows. You need to purchase the Microsoft 365 Lighthouse uh, public preview, which is zero dollars at the moment for your management tenant. You want to make sure you're enrolled in the CSP uh, program, which most uh, MSPs will be. You want to invite your clients with delegated admin privileges. The clients need to have at least one Microsoft 365 Business Premium license. They need to have less than 500 users. Uh, if you want to do the endpoint device management, they need to be enrolled in Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And if you're going to use some of the security features, you need to have at least um, the clients have at least premium P1, which is part of business premium. And if you want to use the threat management and AV side of Lighthouse, you need to enable Defender antivirus in the client or for the client's devices. So before you do anything, um, you want to go to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You want to go to Billing, Purchase Services, and you want to do a search for Lighthouse, and that's going to bring up the Microsoft 365 Lighthouse for Partners Public Preview. And I have already, of course, to be able to do these demos, I've already uh, done this or purchased this. It's a $0 single license purchase for your management tenant. So this is your MSP tenant <clears throat> and it says it's free here. Uh, so that's step number one. They say it can take up to 24 hours to activate that in your tenant. Um, of course, there are no details in here. Uh, it's a simple, you just buy it and it's done. Um, in my case, it only took a few hours. Okay, so after that introduction to the requirements for Microsoft Lighthouse, the steps you need to take to set it up, etc. Let's have a look at it uh, in this demo. So this is the partner.microsoft.com uh, site, the new, micro new, it's not that new anymore, the Microsoft Partner Center. And here you can see the um, clients under the CSP part of the portal here, depending on what you're signed up for, you get uh, different parts of this portal for your tenant, uh, for your MSP tenant. So you see your clients in here and you can manage them and you can see the relationship you have with them and you can also request a reseller relationship. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. So here we can see the services uh, for a particular client. What services do they have? I get links to manage them. I can see any service requests they have, etc. So this should be old hat to most MSPs who listen to this um, to this um, uh, demo. So let's go back to request a reseller relationship. So this is where you would pick your indirect provider and um, <clears throat> then make sure that you're asking for delegated administration privileges. So DAP for Azure Active Directory and Office 365. Here's the email, uh, here's the link. And uh, then you send that email off, open an email or copy to clipboard. You can do an edit, of course, to make it look exactly the way you want it to. And then you send it off to your clients, um, uh, uh, some person there who has global administrative rights in their tenant. They click on the link and um, they get taken to, uh, you know, authorize that relationship. It's a single button and the, you now have delegated administration privileges in their tenant. So that's that step there. Note that throughout this Microsoft 365 Lighthouse demo, uh, there's a lot of blurring because these are actual tenants, not demo tenants. 
Okay, so you have uh, added the license for Microsoft 365 Lighthouse public preview to your management tenant. You have gone and signed up perhaps, but probably already had that in place for the CSP. And you have uh, sent delegated administration privileges emails to your clients. They have accepted those. Then you go to lighthouse.microsoft.com with an, a global administrator account in your tenant, your management tenant, that has MFA enabled. If not, you will get prompted to enable MFA. And then you get taken to the actual Lighthouse portal. So here on the Home tab, I get to see the uh, Defender Antivirus Threat Landscape, Antivirus Protection. Um, I can see some users who are flagged for risk. Some of this is old flagging. Uh, I see that I have uh, compliant devices. I do not have any one Windows 365 deployments and I get some links to what's new in Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. If I look at tenants, I get to see uh, my tenants uh, and any other tenants that could have shown up but didn't show up. You will see I have one ineligible one here because this particular tenant actually has two Azure Active Directory tenancies. It's a long story, um, wasn't exactly my fault, happened before they became my client, but there you go. Um, and you can see, so that's I have one ineligible here. You would have somebody show up without a DAP here. Uh, an inactive client would show up here. And of course you could filter this list based on, on if you had uh, more clients and you wanted to filter them. The users tab, you can get to either by clicking on users or clicking on risky users tile on the home tab. So under risky users, you get a list of um, users. Why are they at risk? When you click on one of these, that's going to take you to the Azure Active Directory portal where you can see the actual risk detections. You can also look at remediated ones, dismissed ones. Uh, under multi-factor authentication, you can see uh, your tenants and their status of MFA enablement, um, users who are not registered for MFA, um, and uh, I feel the need here of airing my dirty laundry in my management tenant here uh, where a couple of my clients have been added. One of these um, tenants actually uses Duo exclusively. So that's not going to show up here because Azure or Microsoft doesn't know about that MFA, but they are fully MFA protected for everything they access it. And the other one is in the process of being um, moved on to uh, uh, MFA. They have fully accepted that they're going to do it. Uh, however, they're in the middle of an office move. But as soon as that's done, we'll have them on MFA. And <coughs> self-service pa <coughs> password reset is configured here. Again, um, some tenants here are not enabled for self-service password reset. On the devices, we get a list of all the devices uh, that are endpoint managed. So Microsoft Intune slash the new name, which is Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, I've got some overviews here of what's going on. Uh, I get a list of devices. I can see compliant, non-compliant, uh, not evaluated devices. I can see the policies that are applied to them. Uh, and I can see any settings across those. Um, again, that hasn't shown up here in my tenant yet. Under threat management, I can see the Defender Antivirus. Remember, this is Defender Antivirus only, or Defender for Endpoint, of course, which builds on top of Defender for Antivirus. So if you have a third party AV tool, it's not gonna show up here. Uh, I do use Defender for Antivirus, so there's quite a few here that are, are there. Uh, I got. Uh, I have three devices here that are overdue for a quick antivirus scan. I have no active threats. And the antivirus protection is up to date, <clears throat> except for those three quick scans once it decides to load. There you go. Um, so we can see device state is clean, antivirus is up to date, uh, real time protection enabled, etc. So then we have baselines. Um, and as I mentioned in the article, there is a default baseline which has six uh, parts to it. 
Um, it requires MFA for admins, requires MFA for end users, block legacy authentication. These are three conditional access policies that you can automatically apply from here. They are report only, so they won't actually block anything at this point or force anybody to do anything. Uh, but of course, you can change that. And then you have some device um, policies as well. So that's the baselines. Um, hopefully in the future we can do some more editing in here and create our own baselines, etc. I know Microsoft has heard that feedback. Uh, the Windows 365 part here, it would of course show you cloud PCs and their network connections to on-premises networks. So I said I don't have any of those uh, yet with any of my clients. And then this is the service health, which is really the same service health as you get in the admin portal. And it uh, tells you about where you're at with, with your um, uh, different services and if there are any advisories or incidents across the you know, Microsoft 365 suite, Teams, Exchange Online, etc., etc., etc. So that's a quick overview of Lighthouse, how to get there, how to get your clients enabled and showing up. Um, I think that Lighthouse is a little bit limited at the moment, but it is a public preview. And I think that it's going to become a, a really important part of uh, most IT consultants slash MSPs toolbox in managing their clients. Because if you have lots of clients with lots of users, managing them all in the same place really makes a lot of sense. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful.